Now we're going to look at how scheduling works in an advanced operating system, namely Linux. So the Linux scheduler is priority-based and, pri and preemptive. So the scheduler will pick the highest priority task in the highest scheduling class. And there are two classes, the real-time class. This is where we need to meet specific time deadlines. We need you know, very responsive tasks. And in this class, the scheduling can be done with FIFO or round robin. And the priority range for this class is tasks are set a priority between zero and 99. Again, lower priority number means a higher priority task. The other class is for normal scheduling. And that's done with the completely fair scheduler, the CS CFS. And that's the scheduler that we will be looking at in detail. The basic parameter that can be set with CFS is each task can have a nice value. The nice value can range between negative 20 and plus 19, and a very low nice value means that we want to uh, give this task a higher preference, whereas a high nice value means the task has less preference. CFS has a goal of keeping a target latency. The idea is that we want to guarantee that every task executes at least once within this target amount of time, the default being 20 milliseconds. Within each latency period, within each 20 milliseconds, not only do we want each task to run once, but we want each task to get a proportional amount of that total time, where if all our tasks have the same nice value, we would want all of them to get exactly 1 over n, where n is the number of tasks, 1 over n amount of time. However, because we're giving different nice values, we're going to weight the proportional amount that each task gets. So the tasks that have a lower nice value will get a little bit more than 1 over n amount of time slice, whereas the tasks that have a higher nice value are going to get a little bit smaller than 1 over n amount of time slice. CFS has a target latency. This is a goal that it wants every task to be able to execute at least once in some interval of time, by default 20 milliseconds. And furthermore, it wants all the tasks to get a 1 over n time slice in which they can run during this interval, where n is the total number of tasks. Now, we know that there are some tasks that we want to give more preference and less preference, so a lower nice value or a higher nice value. So how does that work if we're giving all of them exactly a 1 over n time slice? It looks like they're all getting an equal time slice. Well, the key is that we are going to weight their runtime. Instead of using the actual runtime and calculating if they have gotten their full 1 over n time slice, we're going to use a weighted virtual runtime. Here is how we calculate the virtual runtime of a task. Each time a task executes, we increase its virtual runtime by the 
actual amount of time it's spent executing times a waiting. If the nice value is zero, the wait is one. So a nice value of zero means this, the, the preference for this task is neutral. So we'll just multiply by one, which means that the virtual runtime is the same as the actual runtime. Now, if the nice value is less than zero, so recall that a low nice value means we want to give that task more preference, then its weighting will be less than one. And if that's the case, then when we multiply the actual runtime by number less than one, we get a virtual runtime, which will be less than the actual runtime. And so because the virtual runtime is less, it takes longer in, in real time for that virtual runtime to, for that task to complete its one over n time slice. So that means that task is going to get more real runtime in order to complete its time slice. On the other hand, if the nice value is greater than zero, then our weight is greater than one. So we're multiplying actual runtime times a value uh, greater than one, which means virtual runtime will be greater than the actual runtime. And if that's the case, then the task will complete its one over n time slice more quickly in virtual runtime than it does in actual runtime. The way we use virtual runtime is that whenever a task uses up its time slice, the scheduler will always pick the task with the lowest virtual runtime to execute next. The CFS scheduler always needs to be able to identify the task with the lowest V runtime. It does this by keeping the V runtimes of all of the tasks in a data structure known as a red black tree, which is a self balancing binary search tree. So every node has at most two children and we can do a search in this tree using a binary search technique, which means that the search is O of log N time. And the minimum V runtime in the tree will always be the leftmost node. So we can find that leftmost node in O of log N time. However, to speed things up, the scheduler caches the leftmost node so that it can actually be determined in constant time. So is CFS a good scheduling algorithm? Well, recall that one of our basic ideas is that we want I.O. bound processes to be very responsive, so they should have a low response time. And therefore, we want them to have a higher priority than CPU bound processes. And CFS is able to efficiently identify these I.O. bound processes because they have a small CPU burst time. And because of that, they will have a very low V run time in CFS. And therefore, they're going to be picked out with higher priority, they're going to uh, run first before the processes that have much larger CPU bursts and therefore much higher V run times.